morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to be here to share my experience and my thought with everybody here. Following is my presentation. Start with, I would like to say, China actually supplies the whole world by making an unprecedented move to stop plastic scrap import. This is also, uh, somebody called it wake up call to, to make sure that the whole world understand China is not the place for recycling of plastic scrap. Instead, there's a lot of impact, there's a lot of changes in our industry. And today I would like to share my thought and also why China is doing this, how do they do it, and also the impact of this. Two years ago, China initiated National Shore. This is the step to stop scrap plastics import. And here are the pictures of some of the scrap used to be imported into China. And as from that day on work, China make very, very strict control. And actually it's the using of the existing law to stop lots of scraps import. Here are the numbers of, before the ban, China has been importing at one time almost like nine million tons of plastic scrap from different parts of the world. And if you look at the latest number, 2015, the total import of plastic scrap close to 7.35 million tons. And when you look at Malaysia, in those days, Malaysia was only importing quarter of million compared with seven point something million. Today, we look at all these seven million something tons of plastic scrap had to find home for recycling. And this is the problem. All the Southeast Asian countries now focus to see how they should handle it. All in a sudden, lots of containers, lots of plastic scraps being imported into their own country. So with this national show, and why the government stopping importation of plastic scrap, there's a few reasons for this. At least one is environmental protections. In our industry, actually the recycling will not endanger environment, but recycled in a improper way will in fact pollute environment and put our health at danger. And secondly is the media. Media really give a very, very big impact. Media sometimes only tell about negative things. And also our recycling industry, in order to be able to survive, we compete with each other. Sometimes the most economical, efficient way to recycle may not be necessarily the most environmental focused way. In China, since so many years, high rate of growth, their focus since the last couple of decades has been on high tech, have been on high value added. So recycling is not one of those things that China focus. And the next thing is, as just, just now, uh, it's been mentioned that it's only 10% of the square plastic being recycled in China, obviously with the huge population. And one had to understand to do import plastic scrap, actually it's also competing with the domestic collection. Later on, I will give example of this imported scrap is more economical and also more value. So because of this ban, market actually shift from China to overseas country. And with this shift, recyclers actually had to look for places for recy recycle. And also the license holder in China in those days before China 
shut down, there, there were more than 1,700 license holders. They, are, they, they choose to recycle or divert their plant to other countries, and only a small portion of them remain in the country to do domestic collection. And Southeast Asian are the hottest spots, especially Vietnam, Malaysia, and Thailand. In fact, just now we talk about sustainability, we talk about recycle content, we talk about, we have to understand when people talk about recycling, often they refer to collection. They refer to household, how do they separate plastic or how do they put plastic in one bin and the rest bins are for other waste. And we are only doing a small part because this is only talking about collection. And after collection, there's a lot of things we still have to do. First of all, sorting. I'll give Hong Kong as an example. Hong Kong collects lots of plastic scrap. I would say not more than two or three percent of them are eventually going for recycling. That's why we need to have our industry, for those recyclers sitting over here, they are playing a very, very important role to recycle, to recycle, collect the scrap, and some of them even use technology to separate different kinds of plastic. Today, I think most of people understand that to talk about sorting. We don't, we don't really use sorting by hand nowadays. We have technology like electrostatic to separate different material in black color. We have near infrared, but today with the technology, we have median infrared to separate even material the same color, especially very dark, like black color, to use the infrared to separate material, to separate color, to separate polymer. Once this has been sorted out, we can recycle all of them. It's only a matter of cost. And the demand of the recycled materials is increasing because we talk about sustainability, we talk about EPR, and just now a lot of uh, plant owners also committed to use recycling material or recycled material to have the plastics recycled one time, two times, and also uh, we stop plastic being landfill, plastic incinerated, and also going to the ocean. And now we talk about costs. Although it's a trend that lots of recyclers, when they move their factory, they we choose where they should go. And one of the most fact, key factors that they would put into consideration is labor. Nevertheless, unfortunately, today, all these countries are in shortage of labor. And in Malaysia, uh, not many people would like to work in this industry, so have to import foreign workers or labor. And the, most, the key thing, the most important thing is just what I said just now, is to engage technological advancement, high-tech machine. Now we're talking about not only sorting of material, we also talk about recycled material. Today, we have different kind of extruder. One of the examples I would like to give is a field, field chosen system. In plastic, almost every different type of plastic carry its own characteristic in respect of mechanical and chemical property. And with this property, often we also have different temperature for different material. With the filtration system we have nowadays, we'll be able to separate contaminated material through the filtration system. For example, just now Coca-Cola talking about PET. Often PTA have a temperature of 260 degree. And if this, I would say like the most popular packaging uh, film scrap is like LDPG, and this will be like in the region of 210 or 200 degree. So when this material is contaminated with the LDPG, often with the filtration system, we are able to take at least part of the PET out and, and separate them in order to avoid the PE film to be contaminated. So the, the future is talk about future system, is talk about high tech uh, sorting of material and also recycling. And also automation is also one of the things that we try to 
or try not to hire too many people in, in terms of cost-wise is no good and to be able to be uh, competitive. And one of the things I mentioned about was just now the biggest market for recycled material, I would say, is Asia. But at the same time, uh, most of the material or scrap coming out from exporting country are Europe, Japan, and the States. And out of these seven, seven million tons of material, there would be some material recycled as source. And recycled as source is the one that which is most effective. But at the same time, because this recycling or this exporting country, they might not have the application of the material. So I really believe some of the scrap that exporting now to the Southeast Asian country could be or could have been recycled as source into a stage that the recycler can put into a machine right away. So uh, to give example, instead of recycling them into pellets, often this material can be processed into regrind form or sorted into different form, even in bell form for the recycler over here to be recycled right away. So these are the pictures of um, actions taken by one of the Southeast Asian countries. I guess some of the, most of the Chinese people can read this. And why, we, uh, why these things happen, actually this is also one of our challenges that we have. As what I said, often most people think that our industry is polluting the environment. In actual fact, it's not. Probably we might have a handful of people who may not recycle them in an environmental way. And that really affects the most, the, the most of the recyclers who are, who, who are recycled, you know, who, who are observed the regulations and the rules. And that's why we, 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 we should convince our government that uh, the the ones who are in violation of the law are only a handful. But in our business, I actually think it's not a level playing field because some of the recyclers, in order to be competitive, they don't care about environment. And this is not a fair game. And just now I'll talk about different types of material. Uh, from my understanding, there's more than 40,000 different types of plastics. It's very, very complicated. I think most of the people only know one to seven, and the seven is others. One to six is PET, HDPE, PVC, HDPE, PP, and PS. But why is, seven, uh, why is 40 thousand different types? I think the recycler here will understand that. I'll give a car example. For each of the uh, automobile vehicle, we have at least a few hundred different types of plastic. Only nylon in this car, right? We, talk, we have nylon glass fiber, 20%. We have nylon glass fiber, 50%. We have PPT uh, with glass fiber with firm retardant. So all this add up together in a car is already 200. And then in uh, electrical appliance, we are talking about a few hundred. Because in order to meet the specific requirement, some of the material has to make for the purpose intended. And for this reason, they had to have the characteristic to be uh, able to stand for extreme weather like temperature and also lots of other um, characteristics. And the next challenging is um, efficiency, cost efficiency and pollution. And I just now mentioned about sometimes you know, we, in order to survive, in order to make money, uh, we have to recycle them with, uh, in the most economic, uh, efficient way. And in fact, we need to have a balance. And the other change that we have, or challenges that we have, is the regulatory changes. I think recyclers in this room also face the same problem. Today we can do this, tomorrow we have a stop with a ban, and the next day we have a different policy. So in our industry, because of this, we always have to be ready to face challenges. And also, and also with our industry, I think because of the media, sometimes uh, give negative impact or give neg negative 
impression to the general public. From time to time, uh, we are under criticized by the general public, and the general public once criticize our industry, it also draw government's attention. One of the ways that we should do in our industry is to be self-disciplined. And this is the best way out. At the same time, the government um, also had to work together with recy recyclers through like MPMA, be able to address our need to the government and, meet, and to be a bridge to communicate with the government. Because most of the time, government officials may not understand our industry. And in fact, even recyclers in our industry also have to learn every day. So this communication is very, very important. And, that, and I, the best way is, first of all, self-discipline. Secondly, we also need to balance. We also need to be regulated to have a perimeter where we can, how we do have the perimeter, uh, how we should do, and also where is our limit. So just now I mentioned about this PET, why we import better than domestic collection. I live in, a, in Los Angeles. In my area, every time when we return a PET bottle to a system or to a collector, we get five cents. And for one ton of PET bottles, there's about 70,000 pieces. So based on this, I work out for one ton of PET bottle, we actually uh, get a subsidized of something like 3,500 US dollar. And the other 500 dollars is for administration, for collection, for putting them in bail. Compared with local collection, we don't get this kind of money. We don't get this kind of subsidies. And apart from this, I understand that from UK, we have uh, export, we have uh, packaging recovering notes, which also subsidize 100 and something dollar per ton. And with this scrap, give an example like PET, these are uh, treasures material. Uh, we can use this right away. When I say right away, nowadays with the technology to process PET bottle is almost like 100% automatic. And these are the material that we can, we can eventually uh, apply in different industry. Test type is one of the industry. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask Doug to stand up to show everybody about your jacket. <laughs> and also the inner part. This is 100% made out of plastic bottle. And I'm really surprised that I actually touched the, the fabric. It's really like wool. It's, it's not like those days, like 10 years ago, uh, the surface and also when you put on it, it's itching, you know, yeah. yeah. But this is a very comfortable one. And um, I would like to ask Doug also, how can we order one of those things? <laughs> so this is a very good example, yeah. Okay, now I move on. So I just mentioned it because a lot of recycling uh, industry in overseas, their costs are covered. And when, and when the, the, the problem is Southeast Asian country or Asian countries are the country growing with population and growing with demand. And we need to have recycled material or uh, materials already been recycled, ready for production. And I give example of some of the material that we can recycle them. These are from industry. And so, some of them, even from post-consumer, like PD bottle, we also can import. And with the PD bottle, another example I like to give because Actually, this is a drinking bottle. There's no contamination. There's no, there's not a hazardous substance inside. What we need to do right, is to, to wash it. And often people use chemical or, or detergent, okay, washing detergent. But what we need is to have the proper water treatment. 
And these are 100% recyclable material and can be used for textile for different industry for packaging also. So I give some of the example. I think the most of the recyclers here are very familiar with this and we don't get almost a zero residue. I think uh, some of us might have to present this to the Minister of Environment and to show them these are the, these are the things that we are doing. It's not only the media say we're doing uh, trash, trash. And also one of the characteristics about uh, our industry is in China, often they call their own scrap called resources. All the important ones, they call it foreign trash. Uh, in Canton, in, um, in Mandarin, they call it uh, Yang Lao Zi, uh, Yang Lao Sa. I think because of um, I'm running out of time, so I just go to this really, really fast. And then in case you want to have uh, my PowerPoint, you can, I don't know, the, yeah, you can ask uh, publicity to have my PowerPoint. So, okay, these are the numbers there just now, I it's already passed. Well, every year we have 340 million tons of plastic being made. And it's only like 10% of them are recycled, are being recycled. And out of this 10%, it's only 2% of them are going back to the packaging industry. So we talk about pollution. Okay, these are the example that plant uh, owner, they, sometimes they, 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 they make their Packaging without considering uh, at the end of life plastic that when we recycle. So this is very complicated to recycle. But with technology, it's also possible. But it's not everybody has the technological advanced machine to recycle laminated film. So solution is recycle, recycle, and recycle. But actually, you know, my own perspective right, is try not to use uh, plastic. I, I was born in the 50s, last century. In the 60s, there wasn't much plastic. When we go to the market to buy our food, we always use paper or newspaper, use newspaper to wrap our food. Today is, um, I think today we, 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 we use plastic all the time. And whenever we use it, okay, the public, the general public has to have the consensus that once you use it, also think about how to recycle. Okay, um, thank you for your patience and thank you for listening. And as I said, uh, I actually have more to, to share than, and than what I'm allowed because of the time limit. Thank you.